Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here, and today we're going to be talking about GCC 13, which I'm super excited about. I'm going to show you how to build it from source, and I think in general, building software from source is a good skill to know about and expose you to some of the different tools. But before we get started with building the software, which we'll jump into in just a moment, I want to go ahead and just show you a few of the important updates that are part of GCC 13. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look here under the new section. Now 12.3 was also released recently, which has some updates for a variety of other languages. I'm just going to pop into 13.1 here just to show you a few different things and why you might consider installing this latest and greatest version. And in general, it's a good idea to be in the latest version because you get a lot of the bug fixes and updates, and oftentimes the later versions will have better performance as well. Now, some of the downsides could be, of course, if you're using lots of new features, there might be some stability things or bugs that are still being worked out. So there's always some trade-offs, as well as you might want to think about if you need particular versions of standard libraries that get compiled with these compilers and so on. But anyways, the, some of the bigger changes with GCC 13, if I go ahead and click on changes here, there was a lot of stuff actually with OpenMP, which is of interest for those folks focusing on performance. But in particular, with the C family, there were a lot of different changes in particular with the C programming language that I'm excited about. C23 introduced null pointer, for example, const expert, we've got static assert, things like bool, false, uh, thread local, and so on. Uh, so these are really things that I enjoy using in C++, so it's nice when you're constrained and just using uh, C in particular environments to have some of these features available. On the C++ end, you can see a bunch of uh, features were added for the later C++ versions. Uh, down here on the standard library, lots of updates to ranges uh, for C++23, so you can see some of the different things here. And of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel for the C++ series if that's something that you're following, because we'll eventually talk about a lot of these different tools that are going to be added. And if we want to use those tools, well, we'll need a latest version of the compiler so that we can exercise them. All right, so that's enough of an overview. There's lots of other exciting updates. And as I mentioned, you might even want to look at the 12.3 updates for some of the things uh, for those following the D programming language series. For instance, 2.1 is supported with the GDC compiler. That's part of GCC. So lots of cool stuff going on there as well. But let's get started here with what you're interested in building GCC from scratch. And essentially, we can follow the documentation here. So I'll kind of walk you through that with the installation process here. So go ahead to installation here, and you'll see that we have a few different steps that we want to follow. So as we get started, let's talk a little bit about the prerequisites here. I'm going to go ahead and just open up a terminal. First and foremost, you are going to need some version of GCC. I'll go ahead and show you my version here. I have version 10.3. You might have a later version. But in general, you're going to need some GCC compiler, and it'll be bootstrapped. That means that we're going to compile the new compiler with a version of uh, C or C++ and get the updated version. That's essentially how this bootstrapping process works. So you might need to install some version of GCC. If you're not sure which version you have, you can always search for it with GCC or GCC hyphen and see the different versions that you have. For instance, um, I'm going to go ahead and just run GCC version here again. So you can see that I have 10.3. Uh, as long as you have a version that's probably the default with your distro, something like uh, version 5 or so should be enough. Uh, you just need some C++ 11 features often. Uh, times to do this bootstrapping uh, process. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, check out the prerequisites. Again, as I mentioned, a C++11 compiler, and here's the 4.8.3 uh, has the sufficient support needed uh, for this particular installation. Okay, and if you're building other languages like D, uh, for instance, then you'll need to uh, also have set up some prerequisites as well. Uh, and if folks are interested in seeing how to build GDC, that's something I can include in my D series, so feel free to check that out. Well, let's go ahead by starting out by downloading the source for this. I'm going to go ahead to the Git repository, uh, and I'm going to Git clone this in a particular directory. I'm going to call it GCC 13 source or something like that. Uh, but that's where we're going to start from for this lesson here. So let's go ahead and do a uh, Git clone here. Uh, let me actually just paste this in here. Um, and I want to, again, name my directory something meaningful. I'm just going to call it GCC 13 source. And we'll give that a few moments to clone. Now, this process, depending on your network speed, is going to take a few minutes. So I'll hop out of here and hop back in. But give yourself about three or four minutes, depending on your internet connection, for this uh, download process. 
All right, so it looks like we're about ready to wrap this up here and we've got our GCC downloaded. And again, just to remind you of what we've done here, we have downloaded the source code into GCC 13 uh, source here. So that's our folder. Now, typically when you build projects from source, you will also have a build directory. That's where you'll build the binaries. And most of the time, it's best if you don't mix in the actual build and the source code, because for instance, you might want different configurations that are generated from the source code. You don't want files being merged in places and a ton of directories sort of so you sort of want to break up the uh, organization here so what i'm going to go ahead and do just preemptively is make a directory called gcc 13 uh, build and that's where we're actually going to end up building the source code okay so we'll get into this in a moment here but again just to show you that there's two different uh, folders here we've got the source folder and the build folder now let's go ahead and take a look at the gcc 13 uh, source here and let's go ahead and list out the contents here. And typically the first thing that you wanna do anytime you have some project, especially if you're not familiar with it, is to look at the readme here, read through it, look at the directories for the installs and so on. But of course we've got the wiki page here, uh, which we're going to take a look at. So again, we've obtained GCC here. Uh, we've got the source code and now we're getting ready to configure it. Now, a few other prerequisites that you might need. Again, as I mentioned, you're going to need a compiler. So uh, for some folks, that means sudo apt-get install build essential uh, and you'll need your password and sudo permissions. Uh, I've already got this set up, but again, that was getting the previous GCC compiler tools like make we're going to use and so on. Okay, so that's the first prerequisite. The other thing that you're going to need is if you CD into the contrib folder, there is a download prerequisites here. Now, you don't run this from within this folder. I'll show you how to run this in the top level in a moment, but that'll download specific versions of libraries that you need. So let's go ahead and run that uh, particular file, get any of the prerequisite libraries that we need, download it into the source location, and then we'll be ready to proceed. Okay, so that's set up our source directory. Again, just to show you where we are, home mic GCC 13 source. Now, however, I'm gonna navigate back a directory into my GCC 13 uh, build folder here. So let's go into the build folder. Now the build folder is empty and our goal is to create the software here. And what we're going to actually do is create a make file that's going to build all of the binaries here into this directory. So let me sort of guide you with this step with our documentation. Just so again, if this gets updated, we know where to look here. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to need to do is configure our config file. So where is that? Well, we've got to go up a directory. It's in GCC 13 source, and there is a uh, configure uh, file here. And this is basically a tool that's going to run and help generate a make file for our system. So why do we need this configuration? Well, let's dive in a little bit more here. So the basic idea here, and again, you'll find configure in your source directory, is we need to figure out what type of GCC are we building here, meaning the target. Maybe you've got a different architecture or you need to build a version of GCC that works on a different PC or machine that's not your current machine. So these are the sort of configurations that we have with GCC. And you'll notice there's a lot of them, whether we're changing the target CPUs or so on, but we really only need to mess with two for the purpose of this video here to get set up here. Uh, and the first is the prefix here. All right, so in a moment, again, we'll get ready with this prefix and set the directory name. Uh, and again, this is specifying the top level installation directory. Um, and again, we probably don't want to, so it's recommended that we uh, install these tools in some other directory other than the default, other than just sort of dumping everything into our user local. Again, if you're doing different builds for GCC, we'll want to change this. So uh, let's go ahead and start preparing that. So dash dash prefix. Um, and there's a variety of ways you can do this. You could use home, which will expand out to your uh, directory here. Uh, let's see if I just do an example here, like echo home, and that'll show where your home directory is. Uh, that should be uh, okay. Uh, oops, I gotta retype this out now. Uh, so configure, oops, GCC 13 source, configure, and then the prefix 
equals, uh, and then I'm going to use that home macro here. Uh, and then I'm just going to specify some uh, directory name to install this into. Um, you could create this directory uh, beforehand as well, uh, which might be a useful thing to do. Um, Let's just go ahead and do that here. So in the same directory, GCC 13, uh, build something like that here. So GCC 13, uh, build, uh, and that'll get things ready to uh, do some build and configuration in there. Uh, let's see what else here. So the other important thing that we want to get set up here is going to be the languages that we want to build here. So let's go ahead and look at the languages. Uh, and I know this flag is dash dash enable languages. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to do C and C++ here. Of course, you're welcome to do other languages. There will be additional setup, for example, if you're using um, you know, the D language or something, uh, or Go or whatever, that you might have to, again, bootstrap and have a compiler set up. So again, happy to talk that, about that in another video, but let's just go ahead and do C and C++. So enable languages equals, so dash dash, uh, and I'll try to make this nice and big for you. Enable languages equals C and C++. Let's go ahead and just view this quickly on one line uh, so you can see everything. Uh, that's what we've got in one line here. Okay, so that should do the trick here. Again, we're running this within our build directory uh, that we created. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Uh, and again, if you have any errors or anything, it says it you know created our config. Uh, it looks like it made a... If I look in here, this make file, and that's ultimately what we need here. Uh, I don't see any major configuration errors here. Uh, let's see, it looks like some, maybe some tools won't be set up. Looks like Objective C stuff and some other libraries that I'm not concerned about. Uh, so this looks pretty good to me here. Okay. So now that we have our make file, uh, now we're ready to actually do the build. We can actually look at this make file. You'll see some of the things are actually uh, changed here. So for example, this prefix here, where uh, I believe we're going to, well, we'll see if the build gets in there or this directory here. <laughs> uh, but anyways, those are the types of things that you're seeing. So the point of this configure step again was to give us a make file that's actually make is the actual build system that's going to do the incremental compilation. OK, so let's actually do that now. Let's run make. I'm going to do dash J 24, which will give me 24 cores to do the build. Uh, and at this point, you can go ahead and grab some coffee. You're going to see a screen like this for a while. Um, on average, it takes my machine, which is a pretty decent machine with um, uh, 12 cores or so, it takes it about 30 minutes. So make yourself comfortable and I'll see you in a moment when this finishes. All right, so at this point, we're almost there. Hopefully you were able to get most of the install without any warnings or early termination. Again, that probably took a good deal of time for most folks. About 35 minutes for me with dash J24 here. So thank goodness for the parallelism here. Uh, but let's go ahead and complete some of the final installs, looking at our directions here. Now we're going to want to, uh, now that GCC has been built, let's actually install it here. And again, we usually want to do this where that prefix directory is. So that's what this step is going to uh, do for us. So we're going to go ahead and say make uh, install from our build directory. And we might need pseudo permissions to do this, sometimes to change paths and get GCC set up. Uh, but that is the next step here. So we'll go ahead and let that run for a moment. It should be relatively quick, but I'll join in when this finishes. All right, and just to give you an idea, that took less than a minute on my machine, very fast. And again, what that does is that takes our build folder here where we've built all these different files here. We can see it's populated. But if we go back and go to our GCC 13 build, then we'll actually see our bin here. And then let's CD into bin. And we'll see that we have G++ here. I'm going to do dot slash G++ dash version. And we can see we've got our... Well, since I've got the latest and greatest on Git, actually GCC 14, so surprise here. <laughs> I've actually installed 14 since I've installed from source. Uh, probably something I should have mentioned is you can search the tags or 
Uh, let's actually go back in time a little bit here, uh, just in case you specifically did want uh, GCC 13. Uh, point one from the release here. Uh, again, you could go uh, into Git or you can browse the history here uh, and actually pick out a specific tag again. But uh, anyways, that's just showing that we do in fact have the latest uh, version here for 14, which is kind of cool that they're already putting in the work here on the roadmap, which you can check out on their website. And we have things set up here. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a brief uh, recap here uh, of what we were able to achieve here. I'll just kind of walk through the steps here uh, and then talk a little bit about it. Again, the general idea was to create a source file, create a build directory where we'd build the project. Uh, we clone the uh, GitHub repository for whatever version we want. I just use the late ver latest version, which is experimental 14 now uh, with all the 13.1 features. You might need some dependencies like build essential, for instance, uh, to get things up and running. Uh, you'll have to install some prerequisites within your source folder, and then it's sort of off to the races here. So then we did a few steps here where we configured, which built the make file for us for our specific languages. And this was that important prefix directory. That's where we're actually now uh, in this bin folder here, uh, where we have our actual binaries. That's when we do make install. It'll build all of those uh, files there. Uh, and then, of course, the make J24 step, which uh, takes the time to build everything, and then the make install to build everything here. Now, if I still type G++ um, on my actual terminal here, you'll see it's still 10.3. Um, so uh, let me give this one more try here. I think if I do sudo make install, that might update the paths. Um, if I do that from within the uh, build directory. But again, you can set up your sim links as you need. I typically just keep uh, from source builds in their own directory uh, and then direct myself to them when I need by using, you know, a CC variable or something for the compiler. All right, folks, so that's all there is to it for building uh, GCC. I'll go ahead and pop back into the page here. Uh, again, not too bad, just takes a little bit of time. I know some folks might wrestle with this. So again, uh, some different things you can do with your package manager. Again, try to use the dependencies that are given inside of the tool. Again, the GCC teams put some effort into uh, making that relatively easy. Uh, try not to panic if things do go wrong. And again, use your package manager to search around and install any dependencies if you're missing stuff, but you shouldn't need more than uh, what I have otherwise shown here. So anyways, lots of exciting stuff going on in the GCC world and you will now be ready to go with the latest GCC 13, or again, just to build any latest version of GCC. I told you there'd be a little bit of surprise from Git and 14, 15 and onwards, and you'll be good to go. So thanks folks for checking that out. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to check out my page where I've got some courses on some other fundamental skills you can check out, as well as my free series like C and C++ programming so you can get to using that new compiler that we just built here. All right, folks, thanks for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.